when we were kids, when we were going off on holiday, uh, if we were headed anywhere uh, beach related, which uh, we often did as a family, uh, mum or dad in the front of the car would often start singing or chanting, I can see the sea, I can see the sea. Uh, and uh, we all got super excited in the back and started doing the same thing too. Uh, and the strange thing is, even now as an adult, if I'm anywhere near the ocean, uh, which I don't get to do as much as I'd like to, uh, I hear that in the back of my mind, I can see the sea, I can see the sea. So things stay with you, don't they? And uh, once you've seen something, it's hard to not see something. In this uh, series, we're, we're looking at the Lord's Prayer and the pattern that Jesus gives us to pray. And there's a phrase in it, your kingdom come. And I wonder if in teaching us to pray for the coming of God's kingdom, which is simply about the place where God reigns, his kingdom, the place where he's king. So it's about God's ways being done, his, his will being done on earth as it is in heaven. I wonder if in teaching us to pray that, if he's not hoping then, that in our lives and in his world, we'll start to see glimpses of his kingdom coming and celebrate with him uh, where his kingdom, where his way, where his rule is, is, is coming to pass. So yesterday I got to uh, chat to Rosa Hunt, uh, who is a, a minister, but also the co-principal of the Baptist College here in Cardiff, uh, about her own understanding of prayer and what it means for her in her own life to pray, God, your way, your kingdom come. Great. Well, Rosa, thank you ever so much for um, being being part of this. Nice uh, to be here. Do you want to say a little bit about um, who you are and, and what you do? So I'm Rosa Hunt. I'm a minister, Baptist minister, and a bilingual chapel in the valleys um, and well, who I am is I am a minister but mm. my ministry has two different forms so part of the time I'm in the Baptist church and the other part of the time I work in the Baptist college in Cardiff helping to train tomorrow's ministers. And how's that going in this sort of current climate? How, how, what does training look like right now for you all? That's really interesting, actually, because one of the things that we struggled with before the coronavirus crisis was how to build a genuine community, because we don't really believe that you can form any sort of Christians, let alone Christian leaders, mm. without a community which they're covenanted to and where they remain accountable to each other. Mm. And we weren't sure how to do that because our students are all part time. But the crazy thing now with the coronavirus is that we see our students, or most of them, every day. We have yeah. daily meetings and weekly pastoral groups and so it's actually enabled us to connect much better than ever before yeah that's that's really exciting yeah it is actually yeah yeah um and so as you know we, we, we're making these videos just sort of exploring prayer uh, yeah. and jesus's pattern for prayer uh, so tell us a little bit what what does prayer look like for you in terms of your regular rhythm obviously you incredibly busy person with ministry and, and college and a growing family what what does prayer look like for you and how's that sort of grown over the years prayer is the heart of my life you know I can't I can't imagine what it would be like if I couldn't pray and so mm. part of my rhythm is that at the beginning of each day I try to set aside an hour so I get up at six and between six and seven, when no one else is up, I pray. And that sounds like really spiritual, but quite often it's quite boring. It's just sitting there and um, quite often I might even fall asleep halfway through. I make sure I go downstairs to try and wake up a bit. But for me, the point is that, how can I explain this? You know these pictures you see of the sunrise where the light's sort of coming out of the sun? Mm. For me, everything I do comes out of that hour at the beginning of the day. And so that's like the, the, the power source or the, the place where I set my, my kind of rhythm and my direction for the, for the day. Um, so that, that's that. Yeah. How's it changed over the years? Um, so I think for me, a really crucial part was probably about 12 years ago now where we had a really difficult year where my mum died very unexpectedly. Mm. And then uh, our, one of our sons, who was about 13 at the time, had a very bad rugby uh, accident and he lost his speech completely um, mm. for several weeks. We didn't know that he'd ever be able to speak again. He was a very bright boy, actually. Um, and there were difficult things going on in church. And I suddenly realized my prayer life was 
completely inadequate. You know, I might have been kidding myself up to that point that I was with somebody who prayed, mm. but I just didn't have any resources. Mm. And so I started making an intentional effort to find out more about praying and reading books on prayer. And that's when I kind of started on the journey, which I'm still very, very much an apprentice on today. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I remember you saying um, years ago that you've been reading a book uh, and there was a particular part that had struck you about the sort of um, the, the way in which our prayers often are sort of trying to control or manipulate God. Uh, and actually the, there's a role in prayer that, that God is wanting to do something in us uh, rather than, than the other way around. Uh, is that still something that you're exploring? Yeah, absolutely. For me, prayer is just very very simple on the one hand it's saying yes to god mm. you know that's all it is that's that's it so it sounds really simple but it's actually incredibly hard to do because yeah. as, soon, <laughs> as soon as you start saying yes to god you realize all the areas of your life that you're holding on to really tightly you know and how mm. you really want to have the acclaim of other people and you really want to have security and just this very simple act of letting everything go and trusting completely in God and saying yes to him is actually mm. incredibly hard to do. Yeah. And often I, I think this is perhaps the reason for the, the weaknesses we sometimes see in the church, because we read things like um, uh, Paul or Luther saying that salvation is just by grace and by faith. And of course it is. But this is said by uh, someone who has spent a lifetime saying yes to God, That's who's right. been through that discipline. Yeah. And so when somebody like Augustine says, um, all you need to do is love, and that's, an, that's it, you don't need to know anything else. Well, yeah. Augustine spent years saying yes to God, yeah. whereas we just come across these easy statements and we think, oh yes, that, that's mm. fine, mm. all I need to do is believe and that's it. But yeah. we forget that uh, Paul also said, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ yes. lives in me. Yeah. And I think when you read the, the Gospels through that and the, the letters through that lens of somebody who's trying to say yes to God, you actually think, oh, so Paul was doing that, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Paul had practiced saying yes to God and he finally got to this point where he could say this um, so yeah for me that is the heart of being a Christian and the heart of prayer is just saying yes and I'm nowhere near there yet because every time I say yes to a particular area I find another area where I'm still saying no. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. And, and mentioning things that sound easy but actually there, there's a lot more behind it we're, we're exploring the lord's prayer in, in these videos and uh, this um this week we come to this whole phrase your kingdom come uh, your your will be done which of course it is about saying yes to god's way and, and to god's rule uh, what, what do you think it means for you uh, your kingdom come you know we've got a really small church you know uh smaller than your church <laughs> <laughs> but we have some really amazing people in it and one of the things that we're good at I think as a church is connecting with people in our community who are pretty hope lost all hope you know hopeless in that sense mm. um, and particularly at the moment we have um, a food bank that's growing and growing and growing and for me, the, the kingdom of God looks like bringing hope to people who don't have any, you know, mm -hmm. bringing it without any sense of judgment, without any sense of thinking, oh, yeah, I'm a really good person because I'm helping yeah. this person. It's just being able to, to see the image of God in the other person who, who's standing there before you and loving them mm. and just something about the hope that flows from you when you do that to the other person and the transformation. For me, that is the kingdom of God. Mm. Um, so it doesn't matter whether um, you're doing it in the church or outside the church or wherever you're doing it, but just seeing those, those kingdom values of justice and mercy and forgiveness mm. being 
doubt um, and hope. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so, if there are people who are sort of at the moment looking for that sense of hope and are, are thinking about prayer and, and uh, looking for, uh, for for steps they can take in prayer, what would you say to somebody that said, "I've I've never prayed before, um, or I've done it, but it's never sort of felt right or satisfied." Uh, what would you say to them how about how to begin in prayer? So I think if you've never ever prayed before, the actual, the three words, um, sorry, thank you, please, are very, very helpful. Mm. Um, so just coming before God. And I always say the first thing to do is just to sit there and to try to remember that you are in the presence of someone who really, really loves you. Yeah. And just to imagine God looking at you with a, a really loving look on his face. And so people find that surprisingly hard to do. Um, but I think it's essential because that's the kind of relationship that Jesus wants us to have with God when we talk in uh, praying the Lord's Prayer, isn't it? He uses the word Abba, which is like Daddy. Mm -hmm. I think once you, you can get beyond that a little, I like sitting there um, for a length of time it can be 10 minutes it can be 15 minutes mm. and just dwelling on the fact that I'm loved by God and often I'll use a, a scripture passage to do that so I read mm. one of the psalms um, perhaps and mm. read it a couple of times and just notice whichever phrase has struck me and just use that to as a phrase I keep returning to during the mm. time when I'm praying because your mind drifts off you know into all sorts of things straight away so it's good to have an anchor to to return it to. yeah yeah and there's something about discovering um the freedom in that that we don't um we don't pray in order to be loved by god we pray no. because we're loved by god absolutely and i think that's why i'm a bit reluctant to sort of talk about progressing on a journey of prayer because i think once you do that you're already lost in a way because you're already mm. thinking about how can i get better at this you know yes in actual fact there's all it's almost like going backwards. I think that's why Jesus said that um, children were very close to the kingdom of God. Mm, because mm. children just, they don't um, have to, in a, in, a, in a happy, healthy family, children don't have to convince themselves they love it, just take it completely for granted, don't yes, they? Yes, yeah, and yeah. I think that's what God would like us to do. Um, yeah. It's not so easy to do. No, absolutely. Oh, well, thank you all so much for, for sharing, Rosa, for being part of this today. I don't know how much of your tea you've been able to have because every time you've got to drink it, I've asked you another question. <laughs> well, thank you all so much.